Hey boys and girls, Pastor Mark here. It's that time of week and welcome to our new series, I'm in Trouble. This is a series that is going to help us learn some important ways that we can handle the trouble that comes our way in life. And you know what? Trouble will come. So there are many things in life that can cause trouble. Let me give you a couple examples. When you find out that you failed that big spelling test, oh my. That is trouble, isn't it? Or when you discover that you forgot to close the refrigerator door last night and your mom wakes up in the morning and finds all the food spoiled, uh-oh, that's trouble. Or when the bully at school starts picking on you at recess, that is definitely trouble. See, in life, things are going to happen. Things are going to cause trouble. And so we have to know how to handle that. So what do you do when you're faced with a huge situation and you suddenly realize, I'm in trouble. Hmm. That is what we're going to learn about in, in this whole series. So before we get into that though, I want you to go check out this awesome video. Hello there everybody, my name is Josh. I'm excited to be your host in this series called I'm in Trouble. Yeah, that's right, trouble. Now the world is full of trouble. You done? Okay, good. Like I was saying, the world is full of trouble. Like this guy. Aww. And this guy. And these guys. And throughout this series, we're going to discuss what the Bible has to say about trouble. The Bible is boring. Uh, no it isn't. Have you ever read it? Uh, no, I wouldn't want to read it. It's boring. Blech. Everyone in the Bible is a fake little goody two-shoes. Well, that's not true. The Bible is full of stories of people that got in trouble. And not only that, it can teach us a lot about how to get out of trouble. And to help me teach you about this, I brought some friends along. Say hi to Amos. <laughs> Where am I? Jimmy Don. Oh, hey, y'all. Hey, do you know if Cheetos are a fruit or a vegetable? Professor Hermes. Oh, my good sir, uh, Cheetos are neither fruit nor vegetable. They are actually a subspecies of giraffe. <laughs> For real? Nope, not true. And last but not least, you've met Gordy. Uh, hi, or whatever. What's the Wi-Fi password on board? I'll give it to you later. First, we gotta talk about a guy named David. I once knew a fella named David. We fought together in the war. Oh, cool, which war? You know which war. <laughs> Triggered. Chill out, guys. Amos, I doubt even you're old enough to know this David. I'm talking about King David. Yeah, the guy that went up against Goliath. <laughs> the giant slayer. He was one of the greatest kings to have ever lived in world history. And if there's one thing David knew about, it was trouble. Uh, sorry, but what does a super rich king know about trouble? He wasn't always a king, and not everybody liked him. A lot of people wanted him dead. In fact, in Psalm 69, David wrote that he had more enemies than hairs on his head. Well then he should have shaved his head. Uh, I'm sorry, what? If he'd have shaved his head, he would have been smooth like a dolphin. <laughs> And everybody loves dolphins. Uh, that is 100% scientifically true. My great aunt is a dolphin. Observe. That scarred me for life. No, shaving his head would have not made his enemies go away. David was in serious trouble, and it looked like there was no way out. So what does David do? Does he fight back? Does he freak out? Does he run away and hide? Will his enemies win? And has anybody seen my teeth? You're gonna find out all about that in today's lesson. Well, everything except Amos's teeth. Oh, but Lordy, not. Get ready to learn all about how God is faithful. Uh, let's say goodbye, Aunt Matilda. She is so majestic. Trouble is something we can't avoid in life. It's gonna happen. But what is most important is not what happens to us, but how we respond to it. And well, will we let fear and worry overwhelm us? Will we freak out? Or will we remember that God is faithful and he will always, always take care of us, even when 
I'm in trouble. So you're going to find out more about that and how God is faithful in times of trouble in your lesson later on when I talk to you about that. But right now, we need to find out what you gotta know. 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 And I'm here to have a rockin' time and to tell you what you gotta know. I am so excited about our brand new series called I'm in Trouble. We're talking about how in times of trouble, God is faithful. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. Even on my bad days, God is faithful. That's right, God is faithful no matter what. When we call on Him for help, He hears us. Hello, God, can you hear me? Hello! He sure can, but you don't have to yell. Oop, I'm sorry. If you just pray and ask God for His help, He is always there to rescue you. God is always faithful. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. Even on my bad days, God is faithful. And that right there is what you gotta know. My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! <laughs> Wow, thanks Wiggy, that was rocking. Okay everyone, let's repeat this week's What You Gotta Know. Are you ready? One, two, three. Even on my bad days, God is faithful. Great job, boys and girls. I think we should rock some worship right now. What do you think? Okay, let's do it then. Are you ready? Let's go.
join us and she's going to share this week's Bible story and we're going to learn how King David had a bad day but how he handled it. So get comfortable and let's get ready. Hey Rhonda! Thank you Pastor Mark. Well hi boys and girls. Today we are going to learn some very important lessons from a very cool guy in the Bible, King David. Wouldn't you love to be a king? You would get to be in charge of everybody. You'd be happy and comfortable almost all the time. It's such a great thought, isn't it? But you know, not every day for a king is perfect. Not every day is worry-free with everything going just exactly right. Even kings have bad days. Even kings face trouble. Well, King David wrote very clearly about the trouble he was facing when he wrote Psalm 69. King David said, I have more enemies than I have hairs on my head. Thieves and liars are out to get me. Wow! He was really in some major trouble. He felt like everyone was against him. Have you ever felt that way? That's definitely some trouble. Well, King David was used to having enemies. Remember, he was the one who defeated his enemy, the giant named Goliath. He was also a fierce warrior who faced many battles. He was used to having enemies, but on this day, 
King David was feeling completely overwhelmed. He felt lonely, as if everyone had forgotten him. So, how do you think King David responded to this trouble? Did he freak out and start to complain to everybody around him? Did he start to point fingers and blame everybody else for his trouble? Nope, not at all. King David handled his trouble the same way we should handle our troubles. King David dealt with his feeling of being overwhelmed by getting on his knees and calling out to God for help. He remembered God's faithfulness and he asked God to come and rescue him from his trouble. He knew that God was the only one who could help him. Well, God responded to King David and rescued him from his trouble. King David praised God for rescuing him. He was so thankful to God for being faithful in hearing when he cried out in his time of trouble. Well, today we are going to learn some very important lessons from this psalm that was written by King David just as God answered King David in his time of trouble. And you know what? God will do the very same for you and for me. So make sure you pay close attention when Pastor Mark is sharing the lesson today. Thanks, Rhonda. So remember, just as God answered King David in his time of trouble, God will do the same for you. What you gotta know? It's time to learn this week's power verse. It's so important to learn and memorize God's word. So let's go see what the verse is this week. Thank you, thank you, oh yes. So wonderful to have you. Please hold your applause, you may be seated. Oh, thank you, so wonderful. Now, welcome back, I am the actor and I am perhaps the greatest method actor of all time. And I'm not acting when I say that. Now, boys and girls, I do believe that you could perhaps be the greatest method actor of all, oh, let's be serious. You'll probably never be as good as me. But anyways, I can help you out. All you need to do is learn today's power verse using method acting. Haha, -ha. today's power verse says, Great is his faithfulness, his mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 3.23. What a wonderful, fantastic power verse. Now if there's one thing I've learned as the greatest method actor of all times, it's that the best way to memorize your lines, or the power verse in this instance, is to do it in character. So let's find out what today's character shall be. Let's see. Ah yes! Today's character is a walrus with no teeth. Hmm. Acting, thank you. <laughs> it's not that at all. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, everyone stand up and you're going to roar like a dinosaur and a T-Rex because they have short little arms and they're quite funny to look at. So everyone, let's say it together on the count of, oh, hold on. <clears throat> In character, rawr, on the count of three. One, rawr, two, rawr, three, rawr. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 323, rawr. Acting, thank you, that was fantastic. Fantastic! I love that power verse, but I must be going. My coffee breath is getting to me. Acting, thank you. I have the freshest breath in town. See you later, boys and girls. Exit. Stage. Left. Thanks, actor. Another great performance from you as well. Well, let's everyone repeat the verse today. Are you ready? Okay, one, two, three. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 323. Great job. What you gotta know?
Hey boys and girls, time for our lesson now. Here's a question for you. Have you ever had a bad day? I mean a bad day. A day in which everything seemed to be going wrong. Like your alarm clock doesn't go off, you jump in the shower and there's no hot water, your hair dryer doesn't work, you put on your jeans and then they're two inches too short because you're getting taller and they look like floods now and then you jump in your mom's car and it won't start. When you finally does, you get halfway to school when you get a flat tire and you end up being about an hour late to school then you find out that you missed the most coolest school assembly that there's ever been and everybody got a free prize from the special guest speaker at the assembly and your friends are all mad at you because you weren't there and you missed it and you feel all alone. That's a bad day. So what a bad day that would be filled with troubles. Well, this is the kind of day King David was having when he wrote Psalm 69. And we're going to look at this psalm to learn some of the greatest lessons about how you and I should handle times of trouble when they come to our lives. So remember what kind of a bad day King David was having? Remember our Bible story? Yeah, he felt like he had so many enemies. He felt like everyone was against him. So what would you do if you were in that kind of trouble? Hmm, let me think about that. Would you, well, would you fight back? Would you run away? What? What would you do? Well, King David did what you and I need to do when we're in trouble. It's simple. When I'm in trouble, I can call on God. See, David started the song off by saying, Save me, O God. See, the flood waters are up to my neck and he's drowning in his troubles and he knows exactly who to call on. He doesn't call on his friends. He doesn't call on his family. He doesn't call on anyone but God. That's what he did. See, notice that David's prayer to God was not a fancy one. He simply said, save me, O God. He knew that God was the only one who would be able to save him. So he didn't pray some fancy prayer with lots of big words and these and thous. No, he just cried out to God, save me, help me. And when you're in trouble, you can call on God for help also. And what's cool is this, when I call on God, he hears me. That's true, he does. See, the reason King David called on God for help is because he knew that God would hear him. God always hears when you call for him for help. It's like a cell phone. When you pick up a cell phone, if you wanna call a friend or a family member, you use a cell phone or maybe a landline if you have one at home. And if you're lucky enough to get enough bars or enough signal strength, you might be able to call them. And of course, then you have to hope they're on the other end of the phone, that they're able to pick it up. And when they can't always answer the phone, it's a bummer when you can't talk to your friend when you need them. Well, the cool thing is you don't need a cell phone to call God. No, not at all. Or another way maybe you think you can reach out to God is with a megaphone. See, you don't need a megaphone to call on God. Can you imagine? Hey God, uh, I'm in trouble. Can uh, you help me down here? Any, anybody, God, please? Aren't you glad you don't need a megaphone to call on God for help when times are, are in trouble? No, you don't. You also don't need a satellite or anything fancy like that. It's just simple. Call on God with a simple prayer and he hears you. See, King David understood this and he states in Psalm 69, 33, the Lord hears the cries of his needy ones. That's why King David was so quick to call on him. God, why he called on God for help. He understood that God always hears us when we call on him for help. So do you know what else? Hmm. 
God is bigger than any problem we'll ever face. It's true. If he hears us, then he will rescue us. And he's able to rescue us from any kind of trouble. Bullies in school, sickness, problems at home, friend issues, whatever it is, God is bigger than any problem we'll ever face. King David knew this, so he got on his knees and he called on God and God rescued him. Just like King David, God can rescue you and I when we call on him when we're having trouble. When he does, you should decide, I will worship God for rescuing me. Yes, we need to celebrate that. King David said in Psalm 69 30, then I will praise God's name with singing and I will honor him with thanksgiving. When God comes through and rescues you from whatever your trouble is, there's only one way to respond. Worship, that's right. Thank him for what he has done, how he has come through when you're in trouble. Thank him for rescuing you and hearing you when you call for help. He is worthy of all our praises and all our worship. And we should never forget to worship him when he rescues us from trouble. So we're going to pray right now. And after I'm done praying, we're going to go into a worship song so that we can practice worshiping him. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for always being there for us when we're in trouble. And Father, right now, I pray if there's kids right now that have a, a situation that they're in, that they're facing, that Father, that they will just hand that over to you, that they will call out to you today and have faith that you're going to help them in times of trouble. Father, you are such an amazing God. You're such a big God. You're a God that cares for me, cares for the boys and girls that are watching this, and wants to help us whenever we're in trouble. So Father, right now, we give you all the praise and worship as we go into this song, and we ask this in your name, amen. So let's everybody stand up, and let's worship God with this song, Good, Good Father.
That's all the time we have for this week. I had fun, I hope you did too. So trouble is something that we will, well, all find ourselves in from time to time. While the question is, what will we do when we're in trouble? We have to remember and be like King David and have faith that God will get us out of trouble. So have yourself a great week, everyone, and I'll see you real soon. All right, bye now, bless you.